All right, so after that super long overview on exactly what the heck an object is and how do you create its or define its attributes, let's move on to methods, which is sort of how do you define what behaviors or what actions you can do with an object. And so you can think of methods as, so methods are functions, but they're special functions in the sense that they are associated with an object. You can only perform these functions, you can only call these functions when you have an object um, or you have that object definition. So because they are associated with an object, they are defined inside of a class definition. And that's what makes them different from regular functions that we have been using so far. And so fun a function can be pretty much any of those like named sets of code, you know, just by saying like, this is a behavior with this name, we will run some code that is associated with that particular shortcut or set of instructions. And so methods are pretty much that, Methods are that same concept. It's just associated with an object or an object definition. So something like a standalone function would be like print. You don't necessarily have an object definition. You just kind of have that built-in behavior or that built-in shortcut that's called print that will do a specific thing. And so these are sort of like standalone functions. Methods though are things that um, you, that are attached to an object or an object definition. So something like, um, all the string behaviors that we have, like upper and split, you need to have a string or in, um, you need to know that there is a behavior um, associated with the definition of string objects can do this. Um, string objects have this behavior built in. And so that's the thing that makes methods a little bit special. Um, so like other functions, they have input and output. So you can take in values into a method. You can return values from a method. You don't have to do both at once. Um, you don't really have to do necessarily either of them. It's kind of up to you, whatever your particular method is doing. And the contents of a method are in a block. So they are indented. Um, indents matter because this is Python. So defining a method, similar syntax. The only difference being that you need to define it in a class, which I will show on another slide. Um, but otherwise pretty much the same start of DEF, name of a method or name of a function, and then open parentheses, Slight difference is you put the word in self um, because of that reference to an object knows about its own attributes, an object knows about itself. You have to put that reference in because this is a method or this is a function that's part of an object. So you always need to let the object reference itself, reference its own attributes. So that's why the word self goes in there. But otherwise pretty much same standard definition of def, name of method slash function, open parentheses. And then if you need to take in values then similar to the constructor after the self you comma and then you put the extra parameters um, similar syntax for calling a method on an object so you can kind of think of it it's the same way that we've been doing calling those extra behaviors or calling those extra functions on strings where you have this is an object then you do dot then you have name of the behavior or name of the function that you want to call, open parentheses, close parentheses, and if you're passing any values in as input, put it in the parentheses. So again, same as string, variable name or object name, like this is the thing that I want to perform an action on, then dot, then name of the method, name of the function, name of the action that you are performing or that you are doing um, with that object. So something like, mylist.sort, so mylist is the name of the variable, the name of the object that you're trying to do something with. And then sort is the action or behavior that you are doing with your list. So mylist.sort um, sorts all the items in the list in place. So this is the thing that you're working with, or this is the object you're working with. And this is what you are doing with or doing to the object. So that's the syntax for that. And again, just to kind of show off the two parts of, um, kind of defining the method and then calling it. So you're gonna, because you're gonna define a method within the class, pretty much the same as init. Um, you have the start of your class definition up here. Then you have an indent over to indicate that this method or this function belongs as part of this class definition. This method is part of the instructions on here's a behavior that I want every vehicle to have or that characterizes this is what a vehicle can do. So you need to indent underneath the class if you want this particular 
method to belong to this class, which you do. So that's the first part of defining the method. The second part is when you want to call the method, then you have name variable dot name of um, method that you want to use with that object. Um, and again, self kind of refers to when you create an object, this object knows about itself. So this car, car one, only knows, um, only has access to its own attributes, which we will get into probably on a later day. But that's why you need to put self in there. Same thing as the constructor. You're kind of saying this object will know about itself. Ta-da! That's what that self is there for. And so, again, like normal functions, um, you can take in other input. The only difference is you have to have self in the front. Self must be in the front, but otherwise pretty much business is normal. You pass in however many values in between those open and close parentheses that you want um, in a particular order. So that's input and then output, same as normal, return some variable or some value. So those are pretty much um, same business as usual. And so kind of examples of what that looked like would be something like this, where you have input to say, like, calculate the cost of a trip that I'm taking with my vehicle. So the input would be, it takes in the number of miles. The output would be a number that represents the total cost. So when you actually call that method, um, you're saying car one, which is saying, like, I have a car, dot, and what do I want to do with it? I want to calculate the cost of the trip. Cool. And I need to take in a value to calculate the cost of a trip, which in this case, I'm going to pass in 100. So 100 is going to be stored in the variable miles. And so this particular method, um, which again is a function that is part of a class definition or a function that automatically every object, every vehicle object can do, it'll do some stuff. Then it will turn a, return a value called total cost. And so because it returns value, like every other time we call a um, function that returns value, we need to store that value somewhere because basically this is going to turn into some sort of like number. Like let's say it's going to turn into a thousand in horrific handwriting. <laughs> and so we need to take that value and we should probably store it somewhere so we can use it later. So that's why we need this part of cost equals some value. We're saying cost is gonna equal whatever value gets returned from here. So if we return a thousand, then cost is gonna equal a um, thousand is kind of the basics of that. And so again, self, you always need to put it in there so that every object can understand its own attributes, can um, kind of look, access its own values. But yeah, that's the essence of how you add methods to part of that object definition. How you say, this is a behavior, this is an action that I want all of these objects. Any object that I create from this definition, from the set of instructions, um, this is a behavior that I want it to have. That's kind of how you add it. Um, so one last thing before I let you guys go is there is a very special method called the string method. So similar to init, there um, are two underscores in the front, then you have a keyword, which in this case is str, then you have two underscores in the back, then you have an open parentheses and closed parentheses. So underscores matter, you need to have two of them in the front, you need to have two in the back. If you miss one, super easy, super common mistake, but you need both. Um, and that's because it is another very special method that is part of your object. So this is a method that you can use to display the attributes of an object. Um, and this is something that if you ever call print on an object, this will automatically represent your object as a string. Because objects are more complex, like things like you can have a variable or an attribute that's an int, and then you can have another one that's a Boolean, you can have another one that's an int, you can have one that's a list, you can have one that's a list of lists. Um, it can get complicated real fast, but because it can get real complicated real fast, and because you can also choose sort of what you want to represent and how you want to represent it, Python doesn't always know right off the bat how you want to display it to people. And so that's where this particular string method comes in. It's saying, here's how I'm going to let humans read what this object looks like. 
And so when you print a particular object, Python will look, go look to see, does this method exist? And if it exists, it will follow whatever code you have in here to print out something that looks reasonably decent. And so the syntax for it is like any other function. So sorry, like any other method, because again, this is a very special method. So it will be part of a class. It's not a standalone function. So you need to indent it underneath your class definition. Um, but like any other standard method, you start off with def, then you name your method. This is a special part of underscore underscore str underscore underscore open parentheses self close parentheses um, colon. So this one you need exactly like this. You don't take in any other input, zero input. Um, but it will give you output. It has to have a return statement and it returns a string. It does not, as you'll notice, there is no word print. It is a straight up return and it has a string. So whether it's something that um, starts with a, sorry, quotation mark and then text and then close quotation mark or whether you put together a string, it has to return a string. Um, that's sort of the part of that very special definition. And so kind of an example of what that can look like would be something like if you have a string called MSG or like message, you can start it off by saying, okay, we're going to start off. If we go back to our vehicle example of having a make and model, you can say this vehicle is of this make. So make plus self.make, which is saying like, and this is where the self comes in because every vehicle can only print out its own attributes. Like if you have two cars next to each other, car A and car B, car A is not going to print out how to describe car B. Car A only knows how to describe car A. Car B knows how to describe car B. So um, that's why you need the self there to say like, when I print out the make, I want to print out my own make. We don't all have the same make, so I need to only print out mine. So that's why we need that self all over the place in front of the actual attribute name. So self attribute name. You need to keep putting self everywhere. Um, it will not work if you just put make because it'll not understand that it's basically variable names matter. It must be self dot um, make or self dot model or self dot whatever every single time you refer to an object's attribute. So make plus self dot make. So saying make and whatever values sort here. Then we keep on adding to that string. So model and then whatever model that particular object stores. And so once you have both these lines of code, you have a single string MSG of make and model. And so this method is going to return MSG or message to say like, I have a string on how to describe a vehicle. And so when you have code to first create an object and then print out the object, you'll notice that this is the variable that says that represents a vehicle object. And we're just straight up printing that variable. We're not saying variable dot str or anything like that. Um, we're just saying print me this variable. So print me basically a vehicle. And what this will do is it will hunt for that very special method. It'll say like, does a method look, that looks exactly like this, that starts off exactly like this, does it exist? And if it does exist, it will follow those instructions to print out human readable text that will describe your object. So in this case, because we said print the make and then the model in the output, um, I guess we could update this to be, we need to update that to have a new line character. Um, because we're saying first print the make, then print the model. When we say print car three, it'll say, how do I represent car three as a string? And so that's when you get this output instead, because you, by creating this method and saying, this is the string I want to return, you're saying, here's how, when I print out this object, here's how I want to describe it. And so that's when you can get make Mario Kart model zip zip. And so that's um, another very special method. So the first very special method, if we do a bit of a recap from last time, the first special method that we have as part of this class definition, where did it go? Um, so that first method, which is the constructor, which is underscore underscore init, that's the first built-in method that all objects need to have. And that's where we're gonna define like here are the attributes that I want to have. 
then you have string, which says, okay, now that you have this object, take the attributes that are part of the object and use it to represent me in a very nice string and readable way. And so that's, those are sort of the two very special methods, but otherwise um, you can create other methods within your class to do many other things, but I've already taken enough of your time. So that is a thing for another day. <laughs>